Is it possible to start Knotcraft with only three tools? Let's find out. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nautical Knotcraft Step by Step, a channel for anyone who wants to learn the sailor's art of knotting. So what are the three tools, you ask? Well, you'll have to watch all the way to the end for the answer. But first, I'm going to give you an overview of the tools I use in my studio. It took time and a lot of practice to accumulate them, so don't get nervous thinking you have to spend the rent money on them. If you caught Part 1, Studio Setup, then you're one step closer to making cool stuff. If you're new here, you'll find the link below. I want to thank my new subscribers for all your support. I really appreciate it. I planned on making a video in real time, but due to technical difficulties and a planetary misalignment, it didn't work out. Same great content, less filling. All right, saddle up and let's hit the trail. The best tools are the ones that are comfortable and efficient. I put them into four categories, cutting, splicing, sewing, and miscellaneous. For general cutting of thick rope, I use a baton. There are two ways to do this. The first way is to place the rope over a blade mounted in a wooden block, striking the rope with a hard blow. The second method places a heavy knife over the rope, striking it to make a clean cut. For smaller line, I use a rigging knife. It has one blade and a marlin spike, which we'll talk about later. Fixed blade knives were historically and currently used aboard ship. The blade profile is called a sheep's foot. This design reduces the chance of accidental or intentional stabbing. Now, whatever knife you choose, make sure the blade is thick and sharp. Stay away from box cutters and knives with thin, flexible blades. They are unsafe for this type of work. An X-Acto knife with its sturdy, pointed, razor-sharp blade is comfortable to use and cuts strands close to complete a knot. A pair of side cutters makes a clean cut through rope of different diameters, especially when they are wrapped in tape. These are ground flat for closer cuts. Now, a few thoughts on knives. They should be of good quality, sharp, and fit well in the hand. Never use a dull knife. Always cut away from you and be mindful of your fingers. And remember, safety first. Scissors are the other cutting tool you'll want to have in your kit. One good quality pair is all you'll need to start. Now here are two examples. The blades are thick and sharp. I have four pairs that I use for different types of materials. This one is for general cutting of thin metals, plastic, cardboard, etc. These are for canvas, cotton, and linen fabrics. I use this pair for most of my projects. The sharp, pointed blade gets in close like the X-Acto knife. For my fine sewing needs, I break out this pair. They are made of stainless steel, pointed, and very sharp. Now remember to take care of your scissors. Keep them clean, sharp, and lubricate them with a drop of light oil from time to time. Overstressing the blades by cutting the wrong material will dull and misalign them, and once that happens, they'll never cut right again. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button so more people will see it. Splicing tools are called FIDs, Marlin Spikes, and Swedish FIDs. They're used to separate the strands of a rope so another strand can easily pass through it. FIDs are made of hardwood, antler, bone, and sometimes horn. They are tapered to a dull point and highly polished. Marlin spikes are made of steel and are used for splicing wire rope. They are tapered with dull, flat, or round points and can be used on natural fiber rope, whereas a wooden FID cannot be used on wire. They are versatile for tightening or loosening knots, general splicing, and as an improvised handle using the marlin spike hitch. This is a Swedish FID. It has a stainless steel U-shaped blade and a hardwood handle. A strand can easily pass through the splice without snagging or fraying. They are available in different sizes. This one is for 5 to 12 millimeter rope. Here are two FIDs that I made, one from an old screwdriver and the other from a cedar wood branch. In the sailor's ditty bag, you'll find items for sewing canvas, among other things. In fact, the bag itself is made by the very tools it carries. There are sail needles, beeswax, a sewing palm, sail hook, seam rubber, a knife, and various types of thread. Sail needles are made of stainless steel, have a triangular profile, and a wide eye. A needle case protects the needles from the elements. A piece of oiled cloth inside the case prevents rust. 
Beeswax is used to shield natural fiber thread from moisture and allows it to easily pass through thick canvas. A leather and steel sewing palm protects the hand and engages the shoulder and arm to push the needle through the sail cloth. A steel sail hook holds the canvas to a fixed object, keeping the seam taut and straight. An essential part of the sewing kit is a seam rubber. Made of hardwood or bone, it is used as an iron to crease the canvas into a fold, rubbing back and forth over a hard surface. T-pins are more robust than straight pins. They're easy to insert and remove. They provide that extra hold while sewing canvas or other fabrics. Now, you might know this as an awl or scribing tool, but to a sailor, it's called a pricker. Made of steel and ground to a sharp tapered point, it separates the fibers of canvas or leather without cutting them. A string puller allows you to pull a strand through a knot without distorting or displacing the other strands. They're easy to make from wire of different sizes. Tweezers and needle nose pliers will pull a strand through a knot if it's too short to grab with the fingers. A steel hammer provides gentle persuasion on certain rope projects, but is also useful for setting grommets, rivets, nails, and tacks in canvas, leather, and wood. A leather strop will keep your knife blades nice and sharp. A lighter seals the ends of synthetic cord after cutting. For an extra set of hands, different types of clamps can be used to hold the work in a variety of configurations. Spring clamps are helpful in keeping the strands of a sennet or braid organized. It's very easy to lose your place while doing multi-strand projects. Rubber bands keep those long strands bundled together. The small black ones are really handy. A mandrel is a cylindrical object used for constructing knots. I use them to practice new knots or when a knot has to be made separately, then slipped on the finished piece. The mandrel should be slightly larger for that purpose. I made these from wooden dowels. The leather collars hold complex knots in place during tying. For larger projects, cans and bottles work in the same way. A sailor's whisk is a common item you'll find aboard ship. It can be easily made to any size for any job that requires a brush. Utilizing short pieces of rope so nothing is wasted. Having one will keep your work area neat and clean. It's a good idea to have a pen, pencil, sharpie, notepad, and a flexible measuring tape nearby. Duplicating projects will be much easier by taking notes about the dimensions and type of materials used. Sketch your ideas as they arise. You never know, you might invent a new knot one day. Even though I use all of the tools you've seen, these three are the ones I use the most. And there's the answer to the burning question. A knife, scissors, and a fid. If you don't have a fid, you can easily make one from a bamboo chopstick. Simply file the end to a dull point, sand it smooth, and give it a coat of oil or wax. I'll show you how these tools are used when we start our projects. Stay tuned for part three, where I'll show you what types of materials and supplies you'll need to get rolling in the exciting world of Knotcraft. Thanks for watching. See you soon.